So now, uh, now look at the matrix. How would that be different? So first of all, we have one more uh, row above this, right? Because now we have W0 as a, we have one more uh, row and one more column on the matrix because the one more column is because we have an additional unknown, W0. The one more row is because we have an additional equation. This equation is not there before. So if you look at uh, uh, the matrix, the matrix instead of uh, just to end it over here, so the rest are the same. Uh, we we actually still have to fill out this one because uh, uh, W zero is going to be multiplied by one over delta x squared, and now the first row is going to be replaced by two over delta x squared corresponding to this part and the minus 2 over delta x squared corresponding to this part, right? Should be oh, it should be the other way, yeah. Uh, well, let me just uh, switch this over and uh, uh, so that this looks nicer, right? Otherwise, uh, suddenly the, the diagonal is no longer uh, 2 over delta x but minus 2. So, so let's uh, switch over the equation as opposed to the matrix, okay? So, so let's see how that affects our stability. And... Uh, so what we have to change is uh, A is equal to, uh, well, so let's make another A1, make it zeros, uh, now in this case N plus 1, right? So my A1 is now a bigger matrix. So let's say A1 of 2 to N, 2 to N is equal to the original A. So let's look at A1 now. A1 uh, starting from here is the is the same thing, right? And A1 of uh, let's fill in this entry first, uh, which is two one, is equal to one over the x square. So now this is the same. And uh, uh, A of one one is actually the same thing as before, and uh, A of one two is actually negative of this. So the only difference actually from this matrix and the previous one is this single entry, right? Is the one to entry. Instead of just the one over delta x squared, we have two, we have minus two times delta x squared. Okay? And uh, now let's look at uh, what the stability, what the minimum eigenvalue is. Suddenly it uh, decreased by a lot. Okay? So, so this is saying, okay, if I have different boundary conditions, it, it can actually dramatically affect the stability of the system, right? So that's something we actually uh, didn't uh, really pay attention to analyze in the other equations, right? Because we have been analyzing uh, the periodic boundary conditions. And not only, not only that, but the specification of the boundary condition actually can make the system completely unstable. So for example, this is the case where we have uh, uh, the derivative boundary condition on one end, and we still have the derivative boundary condition. We still have the given value boundary condition on the other end, right? We have Newman on the left and the derivative on the right. So how about if we make a Newman on both ends? So A2, let's say, is equal to 0 to n plus 2. So we basically specify 1 to n minus 1, 1 to n minus 1. Uh, we get that from A1. So let's now look at A2. And uh, we'll just uh, uh, look at the very end. We'll also provide it with the same Newman boundary condition on the very end. So it turns out... Uh, uh, it turns out we also have to end the minus one and we we'll first of all it's it's symmetric so we'll fill out this entry right so we get uh, the one over delta x and a two of end and minus one to end so we'll fill in this both columns at the same time we have minus two actually plus two and uh, minus two. Right, so we basically fill out uh, these two entries. So now let's compute this again. And uh, we have eigenvalue that is on the order of uh, 10 to the minus 12. 
what that means is if you have some numerical error, the numerical error is going to be amplified by about uh, 10 to the 11 times. So, so this is a completely unstable system. And what's the reason for that? Because, yeah, because this is a type of equation, if you give it the wrong boundary conditions, you get an equation that is, uh, most of the time, actually doesn't have any solution. Right, so, so what's, uh, what's the derivative of W uh, equal to F? And uh, uh, if, you, if you have the derivative, is, so, so let's just uh, uh, figure out, uh, let's just uh, give one example. Let's uh, specify the second derivative to, to be zero, and the first uh, derivative to be zero at x equal to zero, and uh, uh, x equal to one to be one, okay? Well, the second derivative being zero means I have a function with no curvature, right? It's a straight line. So how can a straight line having different slopes at x equal to 0 and, at, and x equal to 1. It's impossible. Right? So, so basically, if you specify Newman boundary condition at both ends, you basically have an equation that uh, have no solution most of the time. And uh, uh, in the case, they happen to be compatible if you specify both to be 0, for example. I have infinitely many solutions because this is a straight line, a flat straight line, right? And uh, the flat straight line can be anchored at, at any point. It can be x equal to 1, uh, sorry, w equal to 1, w equal to 0, w equal to minus 10,000, whatever you want. So, so basically, uh, in this case, uh, you can see that uh, if you have actually a good discretization scheme and uh, uh, analytical differential equation that is not, uh, that does not give you unique solutions, you are expected to also get a bad uh, discretization. So, so things like that are, are very important. If you, if you go into your uh, research or future work, not just uh, trying to derive a numerical scheme for an existing differential equation that people has already derived and showed to be stable, but you have to actually derive your own differential equations and then solve it. It's very important to actually make sure that differential equation is well posed in this sense. Okay. Any questions on this? Yes. Like you said earlier, you would have a similar where you did just the forward, the forward differential find a difference to the edge and wouldn't integrate the second order derivative to your solution. You'd also have similar problems with the eigenvalues. Can, can you say again? Actually, no. If I, if I, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, yes. Right, right. So if the differential equation is bad and you discretize it using a different uh, uh, discretization operator, you most likely also get a bad, uh, uh, bad matrix. There are cases when you can think of a discretization scheme that can seemingly turn a good, uh, uh, bad uh, differential equation into a matrix that you can actually solve. But uh, the, then whatever error you get is, uh, whatever solution you get is kind of up to the discretization, right? So, so that means like your, your solution is not anchored by physics, but anchored by whatever discretization scheme uh, you, you use. And that's another situation you want to avoid, right? Which means if you refine your mesh, your solution changes completely. Yeah? That's another good question. So previously, we looked at uh, the way the solution goes unstable. It shows these crazy oscillations, a grid-by-grid -grid oscillation. The grid-by-grid -grid oscillation is actually an eigenvector of the matrix we used to discretize the uh, forward, we do forward or backward difference scheme. Okay. 
and uh, that eigenvector is actually the largest uh, eigen corresponds to the largest eigenvalue. In here, uh, we are looking at the largest eigenvalue of A inverse, right, which is the smallest eigenvalue of A. We can also look at the corresponding eigenvector to figure out uh, how it is going to go unstable. So in this case, the way it'll go unstable is actually pretty weird uh, because uh, if you look at uh, okay, so if you look at uh, a lambda and the v is equal to i of a two, so basically not only I get uh, the uh, the eigenvalues right lambda is basically uh, did I do it the other way I think I did the other way should be should uh, should be v and lambda sorry so 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 v is the eigenvectors and lambda is the eigenvalues. And uh, if you look at lambda, uh, where can I find uh, uh, the first one? So that's diag of lambda. Uh, so, okay, whichever is zero, I guess. Uh, so diag of lambda, let's find out which one gives me zero. Let's do lambda equal to diag of lambda to be uh, a little bit easier to look at. So lambda is uh, this, this. Okay, so it's the third one that is almost a zero, right? So, so that that means uh, we want to look at uh, uh, the third eigenvector of of the matrix, which is actually containing v. So that's that's this one. So if you look at it. Uh, Plot v three. Uh, well, uh, what is it? It's basically a constant, right? So, so basically, this goes unstable by by a constant uh, uh, term, and uh, uh, in general, you you can still figure out how a, a numerical Discretization goes unstable by looking at how it diverges. It's just uh, if you're involved in boundary conditions, it's not no longer that obvious uh, what that eigenvalue actually looks like. All right, some of the well, so, some of the boundary conditions uh, goes unstable by having some kind of an exponential uh, eigenvalues closer to the boundary, and you see kind of a weird things on the boundary, but like. Uh, uh, usually, usually you can you can more or less tell uh, by just looking at the solution just before it completely blows up, just before it goes infinity or nangs, and you look at the pattern, and uh, that's probably the eigenvector of something. All right. 